Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. For the joys and blessings of this day. All praise to his name. Let us worship the Lord. For our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought light to the world. Let us worship the Lord. May we walk in his name. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not come overcome it. <clears throat> the darkness in our lives brings us grief, and our sins are heavy to bear. Hear what our Lord said. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When, Jesus, when Christ came on earth, he lived as a man who knew both hardship and despair. He knows your need. Come to him now and lay your burdens at his feet and confess those sins of which you are ashamed. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ. Amen. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light eternal light shine in our hearts eternal goodness deliver us from evil eternal power be our support eternal wisdom scatter the darkness of our ignorance eternal pity have mercy on us that with all our heart and mind and soul and strength we may seek thy face and be brought be brought by thy infinite mercy to thy holy presence.
The reading is from Mark chapter 16, verses 14 to 20. Later, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table. And he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptised will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the contemplations of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Gainer, for reading our scripture this evening. It comes at the very end of the second gospel, that of Mark. This gospel, the shortest of the four, is thought by some, Rowan Williams being one, to be the remembrances of St Peter, written down by a scholar, Mark, travelling with him as he heard them related by Peter in his teachings. It seems to be a series of short stories, each with a punchline, and this passage we hear today seems to fit that bill. But does it? We know there are two endings to this gospel, depending on the manuscript they come from sometimes known as the short and long versions. In the short one, it ends at verse 8. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. An abrupt and devastating ending, no spreading of the news of resurrection, no disciples spreading good news, no Christianity, no church. And the long version from verse 9 to 20 tells us more of the subsequent events after resurrection and Jesus' repeated appearances to his disciples. He tells of his mission for them and therefore the beginnings of the church and appears to have been an add-on, according to some scholars, summarising events from other Gospels. As I was researching this reading, I was particularly struck by the phrase, the long ending. I see its parallels in events going on today. The pandemic seems to have had a speedy beginning with lots of discrete events of pieces of news, some with unpleasant punchlines, but has, as many scientists agree, a long ending which will be much more of a gradual unfolding of small, barely noticeable milestones with the hope of a new normal to come. It is a challenge for all of us to live in this long ending today. In our Gospel of Mark reading, Jesus presents a challenge, a mission to his disciples. 
Firstly, he tells them off for their lack of faith and stubbornly refusing to believe those who had seen him after he had risen from the dead. Does this disbelief resonate with us about current times, I wonder? Do we find it difficult to believe? Then he says to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. He tells them the consequences, that if those they preach to believe and are baptised, then they will be saved, but if not, they will be condemned. He also tells them there will be signs accompanying the disciples if they evoke the name of Jesus. Driving out demons, speaking in tongues, picking up snakes and not being harmed, drinking poisons and remaining fit and well, and healing the sick by a touch of their hands. So let us unpick some of these words. I notice that in this passage Jesus says, preach the good news to all creation, not just some of it. I wonder what this means for us today. Could it be that we are commanded to preach on behalf of creation or as an interpreter for creation? Trees are pretty unlikely to make verbal statements on the six o'clock news, but the diseases ravaging tree species or the acid rain causing them to sicken and die might be a message we can convey to others. On the other hand, the rich diversity of species in the rainforest and the resilience of some species of algae that can bring back the living coral on reefs destroyed by rising sea temperatures. Is that a way of preaching the good news on behalf of creation? David Attenborough seems to be like a promising candidate for discipleship here. Somehow we need to take notice of what we are doing to destroy creation and creation's potential restorative powers if, it, if we allow it to heal. The effects of global warming are brought into stark relief in this current pandem pen pandemic, where CO2 levels have plummeted worldwide. Water in rivers and streams runs clear and smog has lifted without man's incessant drive to pollute the earth with fossil fuels. God's creation can heal itself if we let it. This is certainly good news indeed, as we are inextricably linked to creation and have been instructed to be guardians of it. So will people believe or return to condemnation after this pandemic subsides? Will we continue to pollute the earth with fossil fuels and let climate change destroy the planet? Or will we let it choose to heal? Can we learn from this pandemic and its restrictions on our everyday lives what we really need and what we can do without? Then we come to the signs. These sound very scary. Picking up snakes, drinking deadly poisons. And yet what are we doing now in order to try and find a treatment for the COVID-19 virus infection? We are trialing drugs, most of which are derivatives from poisons found naturally in the wild. One of the drugs being trialed, chloroquine, has its origins from the bark of a tree in Peru, South America. Signs indeed if it's found to be successful in treating the virus. And the healing of the sick by touching them with their hands. For me, the prohibition on touch has been the hardest thing to bear. As a doctor, I've been sanctioned to touch people, to examine them, diagnose them, treat their illness and to offer comfort and sympathy in their distress. Although I cannot do that at this time, my colleagues in the NHS have been condemned, have been com commended, I beg your pardon, for holding the hands of the sick and dying, for the careful and gentle ways that very sick patients are nursed by hands in intensive and critical care. This must be preaching the good news, surely, healing the sick. 
the last verses tell us that Jesus was taken into heaven to sit at the right hand of God and that his disciples went out and preached everywhere and that the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. What should we do as Jesus' disciples in this place, I wonder? How do we spread the good news to all creation? I have given you some of my thoughts this evening. Perhaps you will have some ideas of your own. I do hope so. And let us hope we can share them together soon. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jane. Liz will now lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep may rest in peace. Heavenly Fathers, we come to the end of today, and despite these challenging times, we thank you that we can still continue to worship you together as a church family. And we give thanks for James and Ian and all who lead and support us in our worship. We give thanks for our community care groups who support all those who have need or are having to self-isolate. For all those who go out of their way to make sure that their families, friends and neighbours are safe and looked after. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the National Health Service as they care with its dedication for the sick. Give them skill, sympathy and resilience. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be alongside all hospital staff and medical researchers. Give skill and your wisdom to those searching for a cure for COVID-19. Strengthen them with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those, dear Lord, who grieve for loved ones. Be alongside them in their dark times. Enfold them with your love. And tonight we pray for the family and friends of John Wilkie, who sadly passed away yesterday. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. And as we pray for the church and the whole world, we ask that you will grant us the gifts of courage compassion and wisdom as we face challenging circumstances together and gathering our prayers and praises into one another as our saviour has taught us so we pray our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. And God, the Son, who in bursting the grave won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. And God, the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit 
be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And as also with you. And we share the peace now in the way that has now become our new normal. The peace of God be with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>